Oh my gosh. Y'all, look at all of these little cucumbers. They are seriously everywhere. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. Check out how tall these plants are too. So we're literally just taking these and twisting them around this twine, but holy cucumber, there's a bunch of them. Oh, all right, hey guys, Jill here, welcome back. I am already sweating. Um, I got so much work done out in the raised bed this morning, came in, took a shower, cooled off. Now it's about 5.30 in the afternoon and the sun's finally, you know, gone away from the high tunnel. So I thought I'd come out here because this is something I really need to do. And I'm just gonna kind of walk you guys through this and that is actually clipping uh, my tomato plant. So we have our tomatoes behind us. You guys can see they're really tall. Granted, we are in a raised bed, but these are just growing like crazy. Um, we actually don't have our shade cloth on our tunnel right now. We're hoping to do that next week when we get back from the homesteading conference. We hope to see all of you guys there. Um, we have a 30% shade cloth, um, and it hasn't been super, super hot. So we've been really okay and everything seems to be thriving, only watering once a day. Um, we've got the automatic timer set up for the drip irrigation, but I wanted to kind of walk uh, through this a bit more. I think I've touched on the trellising system, um, but I have gotten some questions since then. So I'm hoping to kind of hit this. And um, this is also very similar to how we are trellising our peppers, which I'll show you guys that um, in a minute too. But first things first, we have our clips. We have these compostable clips. We get these from Johnny's. I'll find a link um, and tag it down below. The reason we like these compostable clips um, is because we're trellising all of our stuff with this jute twine. So you could use tomato twine and we are choosing to use this jute twine. That way at the end of the season, we can just yank it down and compost all of our plants so we don't have to worry about it. Or if these clips happen to fall off or break or anything like that, which they haven't, but if they did, um, I don't have to worry about plastic being lost in the soil. It's just gonna uh, decompose and break down, which is really, really nice. So I'm gonna take you guys um, off of the tripod real quick, give you kind of a walk through and really show you what the plants look like and then kind of talk through uh, what it is that we're doing, why it's important and honestly just why we chose to grow this way. We've got all greenhouse varieties in the tunnel, all production varieties, hybrid varieties um, and they seem to be doing really, really well. So I'm excited uh, just to show you guys. So as y'all can see, very, very tall established plants we got a whole heck of a lot of fruit on here, which is nice. Um, our tomatoes out in the raised bed are just taking a while. Um, so nice fruit. As you can see here though, the bottom layers are pretty clean. So we've got some lower leaves, but all of the very, very bottom leaves, we went and we pruned off. You can see that especially well when we start getting down here. Um, and it goes all the way to our cherry tomatoes as well all of this bottom foliage as you can see and that just allows really really good airflow but we're still keeping some you know foliage over where the plant is that way they don't experience any sort of sun scald so that is one thing i would recommend is if you are pruning make sure that you at least leave a leaf over where the actual cluster of fruit is to provide some sort of shade um you know this one doesn't have a bunch over it um, but it's okay but for most of ours we're leaving some protection Look at all these. This is the Sakura a cherry tomato. Got a little wormy worm there. That is not okay. What a heifer. I literally had to take almost this entire cluster of fruit off because of worms. So I have not treated my tomatoes at all this season, which feels really, really good. Their leaves are looking great. They're that bright, lush green. You can tell there's like lots of nitrogen in the soil. Everything's looking great. Um, the only thing we are dealing with is the worms. And up until today, I'd only noticed them on the plant at the very end. Now I do have some BT, which is what I plan on treating them with. Really, I don't like to treat unless I see a problem. And worms are one of those things, 
you know, I'm sure tomato hornworms will find their way in here too. I've noticed that BT, I buy it in the powder form. I do know there is a spray form. Um, the powder form works really well for me. Um, and I can just take a little like measuring cup that I keep with mine and just kind of sprinkle it on there. Uh, and it does pretty well. Alrighty, so down here you can see where the two where the tomato, so that's one plant that we have split to a two liter system. So we have this side going all the way up. This is where we've clipped it last. So you can see it needs to be clipped again. And then we have this side, the same thing. So that's essentially all we're gonna be doing is just going through and clipping it. Uh, one tip that I like to give is making sure that you're clipping um, on the outside, like your, your clip in is on the inside. Um, and I'll show you guys that in just a second. I was actually talking with someone the other day and they were like, I don't like those clips. And when I started asking them why, uh, they told me, well, it never actually kept the string um, intact. And truthfully, I giggled a little because I've also made this mistake. But one thing I am going to mention, in these clips, there's a little crevice here. You actually put the string in that, clev in that little uh, crease right here, and that's what actually holds it in place. So if you're noticing, you know, if you've used these and you're like, oh, this isn't actually doing anything, it's not providing any support, uh, that's probably why. It's probably that you just don't have it. So I like to make sure that the outside, um, the part that clips in is towards the inside. So I go ahead and I find the string, I put it in that crease like I'm talking about, probably go up a little bit more and then I clip it and you guys can see immediately the plant was leaning and now it's got support and we'll continue to do this until it's reached uh, the top and so there's so much fruit we've got one two three big clusters on just this one liter and then on the other side we've got one two three clusters on the other leader. So that's gonna yield quite a bit just from this one plant. When you think about that multiplied uh, all the way through, that's a uh, pretty good yield. So a few other things that I'm gonna note, like I said, we're pruning all the bottom foliage just to allow good airflow. We are also still pruning off all of the suckers, uh, which is really important to make sure you don't have any um, that just get too big. And then another thing that I feel like I've been getting asked a lot of is why do you trellis this way? Why do you prune? Like what's the purpose <laughs> in this? And I think those are all very valid questions, especially if you are a beginner gardener. Maybe you're wondering, whoa, I've never seen this style of trellising. Um, honestly, you probably won't. It's not very common for the backyard grower, um, the backyard gardener, to grow things like this. Now, if you have a high tunnel, you might be a bit more familiar with that. But the reason that we're growing with this trellising system is because it works really, really well for a high tunnel. Um, one, you're able to just kind of max out production. And we do that by growing uh, these hybrid greenhouse varieties that are meant to withstand this type of humidity uh, that are meant to be grown like this. We do the two liter system because we yield a lot more. And then this is just super cheap and super easy. Um, there are some different methods we could do. Uh, we could put cattle panels up with T-post. Um, that requires a lot out of me. So I did this trellising system uh, primarily by myself. So that's one thing that's really nice is that you are able to put it up by yourself. Um, and we just kind of have these uh, conduit pipes at the top. I can kind of pan up and show you guys, you see them? So this trellising system is relatively easy. As far as the maintenance, I find it's very, very easy. We have it set up to where twice a week I'm coming out and I'm pruning. So at the beginning of the week, I'm coming out and I'm pruning. Um, the latter part of the week, which my schedule's kind of off because we're going out of town this week, um, I'm out here clipping, but usually on Fridays is when I'm coming in and I'm uh, clipping all the tomatoes. So I have myself kind of on a schedule. Tuesdays I'm pruning, Fridays I'm clipping. But the more you prune your tomatoes, um, and even like pruning off blossoms, <laughs> um, which is super, super hard. So I know it's really, really hard. You think, what? Are you really about to tell me to like prune off some of my blossoms? I am. I'm going to show you what I mean real quick and why. And usually I will, I will tell you this over and over again. The best way to ensure productive plants, to ensure healthy plants, isn't with fertilizer, isn't with all this other like pest management stuff. Sometimes that's necessary, right? I just mentioned in the beginning of this vlog that I'm gonna have to figure out an issue for the worms. But when you are having like hands on your plants, you know 
uh, when there's a pest first and you can immediately treat that usually just with your hands um, you can see if your plants deficient in something you can also see if your plants producing too many blossoms and that fruit is actually going to end up causing more damage than it is good and so I think for me you know the best medicine too for me is just to keep eyes on my plants know what's going on at my, with my plants at all times and then I can better cater to them um, and what they need and so this is something that I'm only doing when I'm coming through that one day a week and like pruning um, the suckers out in the bottom foliage this is when I would go through and see if there are too many blossoms and that I would need to snip some off alrighty so here is an example where we had a cluster of fruit and then a blossom was over here now I still already have all these blossoms down here so what we did is we went through and we just snipped it off now we did that for a few reasons you can already see that this is starting to bend so what happens if there's all of these really really massive fruit clusters then I end up breaking these off and most of the time when it does that you don't even have ripened fruit yet so that's obviously not ideal you don't want to do that so one reason would be that another reason is if you leave them all on there and they're at such different stages and they end up like ripening at all these different stages um, which obviously isn't ideal either so we don't do this often mainly just when we have a big old cluster like this and then we have a random blossom over here and you can see we had a random blossom down here that's when i go through and prune it off because these all like put on blossoms and blooms around the same time so though you know the size is a bit different and some of them they're all going to be ripening and within you know a few days of each other so that's one reason why uh, we do that and we found it actually really really helpful so another reason that I hard prune, which is what you would consider this is a hard pruning, um, is that it allows the plant, instead of putting all of its energy into just, you know, the foliage of the plant, it redirects all of that energy into just focusing on growing the actual fruit. So one, I've just noticed that we get a lot larger fruit when we do that and we get fruit faster because your plant's just putting the energy where it actually needs to be uh, putting its energy. So these are a few things <laughs> that I've learned through the years. Granted, I've grown tomatoes, you know, outside in a raised bed. I have grown tomatoes in a tunnel before. This will be the first year um, that I'm doing these, um, you know, indeterminate varieties, which mean they grow. I mean, gosh, these will go up to the that top rafter that you saw. Um, I just find that hard pruning really does allow them to put all their energy where it needs to go and just happen way faster you got more consistent fruit, bigger fruit. Obviously, that's the goal, right? Is to try to grow <laughs> the biggest tomato. But it certainly doesn't work for everybody. Now, I have talked to some people who don't actually prune at all. Um, and I've tried that before. I have not pruned my plants. Um, I'm not even like trellis my plant. I'm pretty sure I just like designated one of just like, okay, I'm gonna let this thing go wild and see what happens. And what happens is that the tomato actually begins to lay over and it will put roots down and start growing in the ground like this long way. Um, I, I didn't like it, it was a hot mess. Uh, the fruit started to rot and actually fall off. So I did not prefer that at all. For me, you know, we're growing in a tunnel. We know we have a lot of humidity and we know it gets super hot in here. Um, for us, we just like to hard prune them. Now, another way that I've uh, tied my tomatoes up and trellised them is with that uh, tomato twine. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen it before. If not, I'll, I actually have some. I just won't be using it. If you're using some sort of like cattle panel or something like that, you can take that twine. It comes in these big rolls and just break it off and tie it around. So I have done that in the past. There are some pros and cons to that, much like, you know, anything. One thing I do really, really like about this is just how easy it is and how quick. Um, I've even had the girls out here helping me and this is something that I, I can show Charlie and she can do it pretty easily on her own. The one downfall to doing this is I'm going to have to think about well, what happens when they get so tall. I'm going to have to bring a ladder in here and then that will be time intensive and so that's something that I'm trying to figure out. I know a lot of market growers that they have stilts that they use in their tunnels uh, to go through and like clip all their stuff and harvest all their fruit. Um, so that's one thing I'm thinking through but when it comes to that tomato twine A few things that I have noticed 
is that it will break down over time just if it's got major exposure to the sun um, and that you are just having to go through just like these clips and use it a lot but that is plastic that you're going to want to make sure you're getting out of your beds um, at the end of the year whenever you're taking all your stuff down so that might just be another thing to be mindful of. Alrighty, just like that, I have got one side trellis. I mean, seriously, I can knock this out in about 10 minutes. Um, so not bad at all. Something I do want to note too, is if you do buy these compostable clips, you need to keep them inside. If you leave them out in your tunnel, they will melt because they are uh, compostable. They do decompose and break down. Um, and so that's one thing that I would just keep in mind. Um, and so I'm trying to think through some of the questions that I've been asked as far as why did you choose this trellising system? Um, one, because it works really good for a high tunnel. You guys can see, super clean. Um, some of you guys did mention that it, uh, you've done the jute twine before and it has broke down. Uh, we bought all of our twine from the Farmers Co-op. I think what is helping us uh, with that is that it's in a tunnel and it's not exposed to the rain and the harsh, harsh sun. So like I mentioned next week, our shade cloth goes on here. So it is gonna get sun, but not like that harsh sun, like what's gonna happen to my tomatoes out in the raised bed. And then we have all drip irrigation. There's no overhead uh, issue. So, you know, we don't have to worry about them rotting. Um, and then yeah, potentially splitting and decomposing. So. I don't know how well this method will work out in a raised bed. So in our raised beds, we have our tomatoes climbing on a cattle panel. Um, and we will, you know, take that tomato twine like I was talking about. Um, I will have to be mindful at the end of the season to make sure that I get all that and no plastics left. Um, but we are going to be doing two different chelicing methods, mainly just to show you guys the difference. I'm um, going to just see how well they do. And so I'm going to be taking lots of notes, <laughs> keeping you guys posted on this. But so far, this has worked really well. And another thing, too, if you're talking about doing this and trying to be cost friendly, this is a very, very inexpensive way. So the jute twine, I got a roll for 99 cents. Um, they were out of the bulk rolls, but you can buy big, massive bulk rolls uh, pretty cheap, too. I think like seven or eight bucks or something like that. So I spent maybe ten dollars on all the twine between the eggplants uh, the peppers the cucumbers and the tomatoes and then the t uh, clips i got a bag of i want to say this was like a hundred or something and it wasn't very expensive either so this was a very very cheap trellising uh, method if you're needing something like that what's holding them in and i can take the camera off and show you guys is just um, a landscape staple which we had those laying around too so all in all i was able to do this trellising system for pretty stinking cheap and it's going to last really well the one thing though i will mention if you are choosing to do a cattle panel to trellis on you have the investment of that cattle panel up front, but then it is free year after year, right? You're just having to buy your tomato twine, which you will go through quite a few of those. So while this is a relatively cheap trellising option for your tomatoes, there are a few things to note, right? This is all going in the compost at the end of the season, and I will have the cost to rebuy this again. Granted, the costs were low, so for me, that's not that big of a deal. Um, if you're choosing like a cattle panel, you will have the cost of the cattle panel up front, uh, which prices seem to be increasing on those every single day and then you have your tomato twine um, or that plastic tape that you're going to be buying quite a bit of depending on how many tomatoes that you're growing uh, but you are able to use that cattle panel year after year um, and then you just have the cost of the tape so really maintenance and then you will have t-posts um, to put those cattle panels up and so here you just kind of have to weigh the cost of that Alrighty, so down here is the staple i was actually telling you guys about so we just took this uh, jute twine, tied it to the staple, and just stuck it in the ground. And then you can see we've got our clips on that side and on this side. And it holds it up super, super nicely. So that is how I clip my tomatoes. I'm going to show you how I clip my peppers too, which is pretty much the same way. So on the cucumbers, we have them around a, uh, a staple as well, tied around a staple. But instead of the clips, we're just taking the plant 
and actually wrapping it all the way around um, and it works really well as you can see here and this will continue this is going to be it's called an umbrella trellis and I can show you guys that more as it gets bigger but it'll be a single leader till it gets all the way to the top and then the top will just let it spread and bush out and it looks like an umbrella so then for our eggplants we've got the jute twine uh, tied to a staple which will just go staked in here and then we've got the clips um, that will just go up it and then we've done the same thing we've got our peppers pruned to a single leader which they are growing we're going through and just adding these clips um, once a week some of them are getting really tall too as you can see and we have so many peppers <laughs> so this is definitely a new way of growing uh, peppers to me but it's been pretty cool experimenting and then seeing all the fruit that we're getting too has been uh, really nice. I mean, this thing's just like loaded with fruit. All right, guys, that is how I clip my tomatoes. I briefly mentioned uh, the trellising system that we we're doing in here, but I really wanted to kind of talk through this and continue to talk through this more throughout the upcoming weeks because I know many of you guys, um, too many of you guys, this is a new way of trellising, something you're not familiar with. I know on our channel, <laughs> we've never trellised our tomatoes like this, our cucumbers, or our peppers. So I know to our viewers, this is all really new content. And so I'm trying to kind of capture that as best as I can and walk through that journey with you guys. Like I had mentioned so far, I'm loving it really easy, just twice a week. I'm coming through doing my maintenance, doing my clipping, um, and it just works out really well. So. If you are thinking about doing this method, I really encourage you to do it. So far, we can see that we've got lots of good yields by clipping off any unnecessary foliage. Um, the strings are holding up quite nicely. We have very, very heavy fruits on here already. Um, so, so far, so good. I mean, check out these massive tomatoes behind me. So, fingers crossed in the next you know week or so, we'll start seeing some of those cherry tomatoes ripen. Um, and I cannot wait. I'm already like, I'm thinking, like sourdough and roasted tomatoes and mozzarella and like basil. It's good. I know there's a fancy name for it. I just can't think about what it is, but uh, I'm super excited about it. But that's a wrap. Now that I'm sweaty, I'm going to go in and cool off, work on editing this vlog for you guys. Um, there will probably be no vlog on Friday because we are going to be in Tennessee at the Homesteading Festival. And I hope to see so many of your faces there. Uh, there are going to be so many people there. Um, just like Jess and Natalie, our friends who we haven't got to hug their neck in quite some time. So I'm super excited about that. I hope you guys will stop by and say hi. But thanks for hanging out. I'll talk to you soon.